Welcome to CBS 2018 here in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Jennifer Britton, who is the Deputy Program Manager for the ICT for Development uh, for CARICOM Secretariat. Jennifer, thanks for joining us in the studio. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Now, here, basically, we've been hearing a lot of conversations about the importance of capacity building programs for the digital economy. I wanted to, to hear your, your point of view on it. Uh, I'm delighted to be here, not just because it's in beautiful Santo Domingo, but more importantly because I, um, the Secretariat works with 20 countries, the English-speaking Caribbean, and the issue of skills, much less digital skills, are tremendously important for us at this time. As you may know, we have lots of uh, land space in the region, not enough people occupying that land space, and so as the um, scary numbers come out of the developing con developed countries, as to their skill-based needs by 2020 and 2030, obviously this is something that we have to t pay attention to. Part of the uh, challenge is as well, uh, we've done quite well with uh, educational uh, initiatives in the region, particularly under the MDGs, but now how do we reprofile ourselves and bring back that same energy to move it forward for the uh, digital economy for the CARICOM region. So, and what do you think are the main challenges then for the region? The main challenges are, uh, one, I think we have some cumbersome governance processes which take a long time for decisions to be made. And then we uh, as well, I think, and um, it may have come out a bit in my presentation yesterday, that the policy issues sometimes are always in um, contention almost with the action issues. So do we just start to develop young people in kindergarten or do we have to put a policy around it? And that's a challenge in the sense that even for putting a policy around it, you need skilled people. So it's a card before the horse, chicken before the egg type of situation which keeps me up at night. But I think it's a delicious challenge which with um, sustained and uh, strategic partnerships can be um, achieved in the region in good time. And what are the policy, I mean we were talking about here, policy implications, but what are the policy implications for achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the, the agenda for 2030? Yeah, I think it's a bit of the same what I just answered in the sense that uh, with the every day a new issue and potential crisis arrives on our doorstep and particularly we are in a environmentally vulnerable place in the world. So while we may be thinking about um, serious issues like digital skills, there may be a flood which wipes out a whole village, and in some cases a whole country. And so our attention has to be turned that way because collectively is how we really uh, treat with challenges and um, celebrations. So we are going to have to work out very, very, um, again, strategically, how do we plan for the SDGs in light of the things that are happening in the ocean and in the, in the sky and sea above us? So um, the same thing pertains, though, because which policy should take precedence? Right away, people will be saying the climate change and the blue economy um, policies, but we do need to even have people to man those, the capacity, and um, it is just uh, one of the things where we have to sit around the table and really make sure we have everybody at the table to make sure that the policies are almost going forward. Um, for want of a better word, and not to be you know, draconian, at almost at the same time. Well, thank yeah. you very much yeah. for being at the table here and, <laughs> thank you. and in the studio with us today. And uh, wish you the very best of luck with the rest of uh, the, the symposium and, of course, uh, in, in the future as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm tremendously um, happy to have had this opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Jennifer. you. Cheers.